I cannot boast of knowing more than half a dozen women in all my acquaintance that are truly accomplished. Nor I, to be sure. Goodness, you must comprehend a great deal in the idea. I do. Absolutely. She must have a thorough knowledge of music, singing, drawing, dancing, and the modern languages to deserve the word. And something in her air and manner of walking. And, of course, she must improve her mind by extensive reading. I'm no longer surprised at your knowing only six accomplished women. I rather wonder now at your knowing any. Are you so severe on your own sex? I never saw such a woman. She would certainly be a fearsome thing to behold. <laughs> Will you not join us, Mr. Darcy? You can only have two motives, Caroline, and I would interfere with either. What can he mean? The surest way of disappointing him will be to ask him nothing about it. But do tell us, Mr. Darcy. Either you are in each other's confidence and you have secret affairs to discuss, or you are conscious that your figures appear to the greatest advantage by walking. If the first I should get in your way. If the second, I can admire you much better from here. Shocking. <laughs> How shall we punish him for such a speech? You could always laugh at him. Oh, no. Mr. Darcy is not to be teased. You're too proud, Mr. Darcy. And would you consider pride a fault or a virtue? That I couldn't say. Because we're doing our best to find a fault in you. Maybe it's that I find it hard to forgive the follies and vices of others or their offences against me. My good opinion, once lost, is lost forever. Oh dear, I cannot tease you about that. What a shame, for I dearly love to laugh. I love this dance. Indeed, most invigorating. It is your turn to say something, Mr. Darcy. I talked about the dance. Now you ought to remark on the size of the room or the number of couples. I'm perfectly happy to oblige. Please advise me of what you would like most to hear. That reply will do for present. Perhaps by and by I may observe that private balls are much pleasanter than public ones. For now we may remain silent. You talk as a rule while dancing? No. No, I prefer to be unsociable and taciturn. Makes it all so much more enjoyable, don't you think? Tell me, do you and your sisters very often walk to Meryton? Yes, we often walk to Meryton. It's a great opportunity to meet new people. When you met us, we just had the pleasure of forming a new acquaintance. Mr. Wickham is blessed with such happy manners. He is sure of making friends. Whether he's capable of retaining them is less certain. He's been so unfortunate as to lose your friendship. And I dare say that is an irreversible event. It is. Why do you ask such a question? To make out your character, Mr. Darcy. And what have you discovered? Very little. I hear such different accounts of you as puzzle me exceedingly. I hope to afford you more clarity in the future. What was my friend like in Hertfordshire? You really care to know? Prepare yourself for something very dreadful. The first time I saw him at the assembly, he danced with nobody at all. 
even though gentlemen were scarce and there was more than one young lady sitting down without a partner. I knew nobody beyond my own party. Oh, and nobody can be introduced in a ballroom. But William, I need you. I do not have the talent of conversing easily with people I have never met before. Perhaps you should take your aunt's advice and practice. Forgive me, madam, for taking up so much of your time. You're in London. No. No, I'm not. No. no I we would not have come early. Some you're... business with my steward. Yeah. I'm in Devonshire with my aunt and uncle. And are you having a pleasant trip? Very pleasant. Tomorrow we go to Matlock. Tomorrow. Are you staying at Lambton? Yes, at the Rose and Crown. Yes. I'm so sorry to intrude. They said that the house was open for visitors. I had, I had no idea. May I see you back to the village? No. I'm very fond of walking. Yes. Yes, I know. What a beautiful pianoforte. My brother gave it to me. He shouldn't have. Yes, I should. Oh, very well, then. <laughs> Easily persuaded, is she not? Your unfortunate brother once had to put up with my playing for a whole evening. But he says you play so well. Then he has perjured himself most profoundly. <laughs> no, I said played quite well. Oh, quite well is not very well. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Sleep. Nora, my aunt. Yes, she was here. How can I ever make amends for such behavior? After what you have done for Lydia, and I suspect for Jane also, it is I who should be making amends. You must know. Surely you must know. It was all for you. You are too generous to travel with me. I believe you spoke with my aunt last night, and it has taught me to hope, as I had scarcely allowed myself before. If your feelings are still what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes have not changed. But one word from you will silence me forever. If, however, your feelings have changed, I would have to tell you. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love and love and love you. I never wish to be parted from you from this day on. Mr. Elizabeth. 